Noted. Um, thank you all for attending. Uh, this seminar today is uh, all about iLogic and how it, it can allow us to go deeper into uh, Inventor. Um, uh, we bear with me one second. Okay, and as the uh, invitation to today's webinar suggested, um, uh, the agenda is, uh, is all about understanding what iLogic is and why it's important, um, who it makes sense to. Uh, we're going to have a look at a, a live demonstration of iLogic working together with Inventor, how it can add intelligence and logic and decision making to our Inventor parts and assemblies. Um, we'll have a look at some live, real life examples of of iLogic and how it's being used by some Catasys customers. And then at the end of the webinar, armed with that information and knowledge, we'll, uh, we'll have a look at some of the next steps that we might want to take. Um, again, welcome to the session today. My name is Gordon McLathery. I'm the training manager at Catasys. Um, joined uh, presenting today's webinar with Thomas Larson, who's the manufacturing product manager at BTEC, our, our Autodesk partner. Um, for those of you who do not know Catasys, we are a, an, an Autodesk Gold partner and uh, authorized training center. Uh, one of the things that we try to do as a training business is stay out in front of demand for um, using exciting technologies to help people get their jobs done uh, faster and more intelligently, and iLogic is, is certainly one of those, and it's, uh, and it's the topic of today's session. So. What is iLogic? Well, basically, uh, iLogic is a it's an add-in to Inventor. It's not a separate software program. Um, it's actually part of Inventor. It's been part of Inventor since Inventor 2011. So, if you have Inventor, yeah, you actually already have it. Um, and iLogic is a programming environment, uh, an easy-to-use programming environment uh, that's actually designed for non-programmers. Um, it actually works with VB.NET, so those that that do program can get into it uh, in a lot more detail. But it is really a, a, a way for automating inventor work for non-programmers. And what it does is iLogic allows you to take the design automation that you begin to incorporate into your inventor models um, through parameters and equations. It allows you to take that that automation one step further by adding uh, logic and decision making and intelligence uh, to your to your designs. Uh, iLogic manages all types of inventor files, so parts, assemblies, drawings, and environments. And again, iLogic is a way for incorporating your design rules into uh, into your model. So, um, so if you can imagine uh, the first level of design automation that you've already begun. Hopefully, everyone on this today's session knows about parameters and equations uh, and Inventor. That's really the first level of of design automation with uh, with Inventor. The second level um, is parts, I parts, and I assemblies. And iLogic really sits on top of that. So it's an additional layer of design automation that um, allows you to uh, define the behavior of attributes and components in a model. So you're, you use iLogic to control those values um, and, uh, and add intelligent, basically incorporate your design intent uh, into your inventor model. Now, in addition to doing that, um, once those those rules, those that design intent uh, is set. Once you set that in your inventor part or inventor assembly, um, and you verify that they work as expected, then you can set iLogic to manage uh, inventor events. So every time a particular thing happens in inventor, uh, it calls in that uh, that particular piece of automation that you've designed and those rules that you've in embedded into your model. So in a nutshell, iLogic enables rules-based design, design, providing a very easy way to capture uh, your intent and reuse that work. Uh, it, it allows you to standardize 
uh, across your business and automate your design process and even configure your products. Now, some examples. Um, we'll have a look at some examples in a minute. Uh, Thomas will have will show us uh, iLogic in use. Uh, just some of the ways that our customers are using iLogic to uh, automate their design process. Uh, iLogic can control model and user parameter values to ensure that the specifications and, your, and those standards that have been set are met. Um, uh, iLogic will allow you to perform multiple operations on a single click, a single user input. Uh, it would allow you to read documentation information. It would allow you to measure entities in a model. Uh, it, you can use it to control view drawing size, borders, title blocks based on user input. And you can even get it to perform checks on your model. And who is it for? Well, it's it's actually for everyone. It's really for any serious inventor user. So if um, it's, you don't have to have programming background uh, or to be a developer, um, you can. Uh, if you are a developer, you can go go much deeper into uh, into iLogic by hooking it up with VB.net. Okay, so that's a really quick overview of, uh, of um, iLogic. Uh, I'm now going to pass over to Thomas, who's going to show us uh, iLogic in action. Thomas, over to you. Hello, now I think it will work. My name is Thomas and I'm uh, sitting in Denmark, so bear with me with, if my English is not 100% correct. As Gordon mentioned, we are going to look at uh, iLogic and I can promise you I'm not a developer, but still iLogic is very easy to use. Today we are going to build, a, I think it's a coffee brewer, so at the end we will have this assembly up and do some configurations. But uh, first of all, we start more simple with the part. And uh, often when people are doing uh, parts and assemblies in Atlantic, some of the pain points are to remember to fill out all I properties. And if you look here, my description is empty. So now I want to make a rule where Atlantic should make a check if if a description is empty then uh, show me a box so I don't forget it so to fire up iLogic I go to the manage to the iLogic browser and down here we can take it out here I can make some internal rooms I can make a form I will come back to that you can make a, a global form which means it's outside of the part and you can have external rules, so it's out, so that it's not inside the part, but somewhere on the server or so on. But we make a, a internal uh, rule. So make a rule, give it a name. I will call it description. And here we have our logic. First of all, I can see my browser, and uh, I can see all my parameters. I can see the different features. Over here I have something called snippets. That's code pieces, so I don't have to type in everything. 
Uh, down here we have uh, some operators, some keywords, and one of them we are going to use most often. If, then, end if. And uh, for the first thing, I go up here and say, I make a name and I call it description. Descriptions is equal. And then I have to find the I properties. And here I have a list of all the I properties. And if I double click on uh, description, now it says me, my name is description. That's equal, equal to the I property on the project description. If description equal quote, quote, that means empty, then you should show me an input box. And down here I have some message box. Down here I have an input box. Say description is equal an input box. Uh, we can say, oh, sorry. Please enter description. This is the header. For this one, I just call it header. And the last one is what we're going to fill in. So if description is empty, then show me an input box. And then I have to tell it one more time that description equal oh up here I'm missing this so so now it should work just for to be sure I want our logic to update uh, my document or my, my file so when you finish immediately update <coughs> So let's see if it will work. Oh. So if I fill in test, hit OK. Look at my I property on the project. Nothing happened. Oh, why? Then we have to go back. Probably I have misspelled something. Just have to look. Oh, there, we miss an S. Okay. So one more time, put in test. Hit okay. And now it works. So I delete it again. So now I have to right click and say run rule and that's that's not good. So I can make an event trigger. When should the, uh, the rule, when should it fire up? And for a description, it could be just before I save the document. So just before I hit save, then run the rule called description. <clears throat> so if we have a look now, description is empty. I hit the save button and voila, please enter description. So now I will never forget to fill in description, and it could be description, part, number, title, whatever. So that makes sense. That was an easy one. So with this uh, coffee pot here, I want to control different sizes. So if I look at my parameters, I have uh, one here called a diameter and a height. I just take this one. So I want to make a, a user parameter. And I call it size. And the size should be in uh, gallons. And the first one should be 10 gallons. So I hit done. I make a new rule. We can call it size. And one more time, we take this one. 
if my expression, and if I take my user parameters, I have it over here. So I can right click on it and say capture current state. If size is equal 10 gallons, then I take my model parameters, take the diameter, capture state, hit enter, capture height. So if size is 10 gallons, diameter should be 13 and height should be 18. Else, if size equal 15, then and then we take a copy, paste. We could say 15, 20, make a new copy. And say, what about if the size should be 20? Then the diameter should be uh, 17, and the height should be 22. And just to be sure, update the document. So let's check if this should work. So if I hit 15, it changed both the diameter and the height. Oh, not 50, but 20. So my rule is working, but if I spell put in 12 or 17, it will not work. So I will make this as a multi-value. So I have 15 and 20 and add these and hit OK. So now 15 or 20. So this rule is working. We could, for instance, have a different material depending on the size. So now I want to make a, a user parameter with some different materials. And instead of a numeric, I want to it as a text. Call it material. Oh. Material. Make it as a multi-value. This is a very expensive one, so it could be gold, copper, or steel mill. And here it's important that it's spelled exactly like uh, Inventor's material library. So now I have a user parameters. We make a new rule. Call it material. And one more time we use the if then. If size equal 10 gallons, then material equal gold. Else, if size equal 15 gallons, then, oh, then matty material equal, let's say, copper. We can take a copy-paste. And say, 20. And steel milled. Now we have to tell it where to put the material. So we go back to the eye properties and says material equal my parameter called material. And one more time just to be sure, update the document. So now we hit OK. I can just have a look. Now it's gray. And if I remember correct, we are on a 10 gallon, so it should change to gold when I hit OK. And it did. So
So if I change it to a 15 gallon, it changed to copper, 20 gallon, it changed to steel mill. So now we can control the size and the material. The last thing I want to control when I'm on the part is I have a, a pattern over here where I can copy this hole over. And now I have a parameter called one. So if we look inside here, that's the placement. It's, it's my number for my parameter. I want to make a new one. I want to make a numeric called uh, numbers. And it should be a unit list. And we can make that one. So we said done. We make a new rule. Call it numbers. And if numbers equal one, then my NO equal one. And then we make an else if numbers equal try to then no equal to and then we take a copy of this one and change that to three So let's have a look. So if I change this one to two, we have two holes. If I change it to three, we have three holes. But what about if we say five? Nothing happens. So we we will have to take care of that. So I go back to one and say done. Go back and edit my rule and make a new one. Else if numbers are greater than three, then I want to give the, the user a message box. We can say no more more then three holes, and this could be a warning. And just to make sure that something happens, we can say, if we type more than three, we go back to three holes. So now it should oh, make three holes, whatever. So let's try. So we take the parameters and say instead of one, we want five. It gives me a box called warning, no more than three holes. And if I hit OK, it switches back to three holes. So now on this part, I can control the eye properties, the size, the material, and a pattern. And there's, it's just your imagination that what you can do inside these rules. So there's a lot of snippets. So now we will uh, go back to the assembly. Here I have uh, two rules, one rule for the frame size and one rule for the kettle size. And just to have a look on my parameters, I have one called one tier. And if I change that, now we have two levels, and we can take three levels, and I can have a 10 gallon or a 20 gallon. So we can go back, set one tier and a 10 gallon, and have a look up on the rules. So if it's only a one level, one tier, <coughs> then I can control the parameters 
inside a part. So this is my part name from the browser, and this is my parameter inside that part. So if it's a one tier, then go to my part called left center tube, and set the parameter called left center tube length to 13. And then I have a parameter on each part I want to change. On this one, I have a part as is the component active. Look for the upper tube front, and if it's only a one tier, then it should not be active. So in my browser, I will have some parts that's suppressed. The other rule is almost the same as the one we made by the 10 gallons. The only difference is that we are in assembly and we are controlling a parameter inside a part. So just for fun, we can make a new rule. If we look under here, we have something called a banjo burner. And I want to make a choice if it should be there or not. So first of all, I go to my parameters. I could make a true or false. We could call it banjo. And done. And if we make a rule, call it banjo. If banjo equals true, then we find a component, component is active, and here it should be R. Oh, this is too difficult. We go over here and say, this one, captures Jade. Then it's filled in for me. So, next line, Banjo Burner 2 captures Jade. And the same thing for number 3. And then we make a else if. Banjo equal false. Then, oh. Oh, bear with me. We take this one, make a copy, and then we just have to change this one to false. So you have to get used to be very good at copy paste and not do mistyping. So let's see if it works now. So if we take my parameter and switch to false, then they're turned off, switch back to true, and then we have it. So now it works. If it's inside Inventor, oh, sorry, 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 sorry. If we're inside Inventor, I can make a form to control, instead of going up in these parameters and change everything, I can make a form. So right click, add a form. So now my form is empty. I can give it a, a name. It should be a header. What do I want to control? I want to control the levels and the size and hit OK. So now I have a, a form here and said two, three, 20 gallons, go back to 1. So now if I place this assembly inside another assembly, I can have, have this form uh, as the first thing I see, and then I can change my parameters. If it's something I want to go up to the web, I can go to my Autodesk 360 and say upload this configuration to my configurator uh, 360. So now it has to go to to log in on my on my configura configuration page. Yeah, I want to save. Okay. We want a new design called uh, uh, 
I logged to webinar, and now I upload it, and it will take 20 seconds or so. Then I can uh, send this configuration to everybody. Just have to log in. So now it should be here, iLogic Webinar, and I can open, this is some other configurations I have up here. So now we are on the cloud, so I can go to Design, and it has to load it in, and hopefully we'll see my coffee machine inside here. And this link, I can send this to every customer or sales guy I want to, and he can make some configurations in here. So here we have my coffee brewer, and here we have my options, and once again I can make it two levels. Or 20 gallon or whatever, and when I'm satisfied as a user, as an end user, I can have a 3D DWF, a JPEG, uh, an Inventor drawing, an AutoCAD drawing, I can have a PDF document, we can have, let's say we want a PDF document. Now it will make a PDF document for me. So now it has downloaded for me, and you can see it here. Or if I want to, I can make a quote. I say, yeah, I'm interesting. Fill out this thing, and you will have a notice that some of, one of your customers want one of your machines. So at the end I will go back to Inventor just to show you another configuration. Before, oh that was not good. So here I have another assembly. It's a trailer and I have I think it's seven or eight different rules to control uh, material and wheels and lights and so on. And I have made a format for this as well. So pick a type, and we can say we want a, a 200. Now it has to figure out how to change all the parts. We can say if we take a look at the lamps, now they are placed below. I want to a side placement. Now this, the chassis is made in aluminum, I want it in wood, and I only needed a one, one wheel set. And if I have the money, I can buy some extra equipment, it could be a trailer cap, or a support wheel, here in the front. So this is just another way. and. Uh, if I want to, I can make a DWF file from this one. Or, as I showed you before, I can upload it to Configurator 360. So this was what I was thinking of showing you. So now I will hand it back to Gordon. Okay, Thomas, thank you very much. Right, and I guess the, um, it, it, that was terrific, Thomas, thank you. And, and again, the, the focus of the presentation today is to, uh, is to look at some real world examples of how iLogic can, uh, can improve the way that you produce your designs. And um, we've, we've had a, another uh, Catasys customer volunteer how they're using um, iLogic together with Inventor, a company called Kirk Environmental, um, who are a leading liquid storage tank manufacturer. Uh, and they found that um, during the engineering and design phase of a lot of their projects, the clients, clients being clients that keep changing their minds, there's numerous changes that are required to, um, to specify the kind of the sizing, the positioning of various pipes and connections and other items that that go go to their uh, their 
their products and they found that using iLogic enabled their engineers to proactively work with those clients to speed up the way that uh, they go through an approval process and look at various design options so that what would normally take weeks uh, to go back and forth with a particular client and get those decisions made and implemented, those, that gets reduced down to a matter of days and uh, just through, through the use of iLogic. So in, a, in a, addition to it being a, um, a terrific way to automate uh, their design process, it, they turned it into a sales tool. So it, it's now become a way of not only saving time, but uh, helping them win business. And according to Jonathan Brook, the engineering director at Kirk Environmental, iLogic has great potential to further improve our working practices. We're currently developing model configurators for many of our standard tank models, allowing much faster responses to sales inquiries. And you have a look, look at, uh, at what Kirk does on their website. There's also an interesting um, page on the website that talks about how they're also working together with Catasyst um, to make their products BIM Level 2 compliant. So um, that's a quick look at, uh, at iLogic. Um, some of the next steps that you might want to consider. Um, uh, there's a, a great, uh, very active forum um, on iLogic uh, here at this address. So we'll make this presentation available to everybody at, on today's webinar so you don't have to write this down. We'll send, send this along to you. Um, if you'd like to learn uh, iLogic, um, we, Catasyst has a, uh, a two-day training course um, that teaches the skills that we, we saw Thomas use just now. Um, the next one is coming up in our Manchester office uh, the second week of January. You can get information on the course description and pricing uh, on our website. Um, other things that you might want to do coming off of today's uh, session is stay in touch, please. If you have any questions um, for our team, uh, please give us a call. This number, uh, send us an email. Stay in touch with uh, our technical team on our our blog, cadblog.co.uk. If you haven't visited that, uh, we post uh, the frequent posts on Inventor Top Tips. Stay in touch with us via Twitter, and uh, that's what Thomas and I wanted to show you. Um, we, did, we do have a little bit of time. We're right at 40 minutes, uh, so we have about five minutes for, for questions. If, if anyone has any questions for either myself or Thomas, um, you can ask us by the uh, questions window here on your browser. And, um, and if, again, if you do have any questions, uh, please fire away. Uh, there's one question here about the pricing for our, our training course is 600 pounds for, for the two-day class. Uh, and the other part, part of the question was, do we, can we run that training in-house? And the answer is yes, we can. Okay. Any more questions? Okay. Well, I guess the only thing that remains is um, to thank you all very much for attending. Um, thank you for Thomas for his, uh, his top tips on iLogic. Thanks to Kirk Environmental for contributing to, the, to the, today's presentation. And again, thank you all for attending.